Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello everyone and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly, Jonathan Chan and Kevin Quo, also of FantasySixPack.net. Well folks, uh, a lot of injuries, a lot of changes, a lot of uh, you know, a rather quiet uh, trade deadline as well. Uh, we've got a game going on at the moment, uh, Dallas and the New York Giants. Uh, Dallas is leading by a point because uh, uh, because Rosas missed the extra point. So that's going to be going into the fourth quarter. Uh, first, we'll talk to uh, Jonathan. How's it going, man? How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. And Dallas is now up by eight. They just scored a touchdown. Who scored it? Uh, I think it was Gallup. Oh, Gallup. All right. I, see. Yeah, I think um, it was Gallup. Okay. Uh, Kev, so, how are you doing today? You on uh, in good spirits today? Have a good yeah, uh, fantasy um, weekend? Doing all right. Doing all right. Not too bad. I had a good weekend. Um, went to Vegas. Lost a bunch of money. So, oh, you know, we're good. How did you lose the money, though? Did you gamble it or did you spend it? Uh, both. Yeah, that's the danger. That's the way to go. <laughs> that's the way to do it. The way to do it. Um, yeah, I, I won't, go, won't go down that road. Uh, let's get right into the news, guys. Um, before the weekend or on the weekend, uh, Josh Gordon went to the Seahawks. Now, I know how you guys feel about Josh Gordon. Uh, 28th waiver priority. Um, I'll go to, uh, the big fan is Jono, Jono, Josh Gordon, Seahawks, your take. I mean, I wouldn't rush to the waiver wire for him, but in the one league that I'm completely out of and no longer care, no longer care about, I added him immediately because why not? Um, don't really know how he's going to look coming off a knee injury. He's got to integrate into another new offense. Um, this one might be a little bit better for him because the Seahawks have a lot of those broken passes that he can, you know, just try to go deep and let Russ throw to him. But it's very, very tough to say what he's going to look like. If you have a bench spot, there are worse flyers, but not really anything you can bank on. And uh, Kevin, I turn to you now. Armand Kreef just went to the Panthers, and he had 19th. He went 19th in the priority. Uh, does that say anything? About Josh Gordon and <laughs> um, I don't know. Honestly, I think people are probably not willing to take that big of a risk on Gordon, especially if he didn't work out with the Patriots. Probably the idea is if he's not going to work out with the Patriots, he's not going to work out with anyone. Kind of like the AB thing. Uh, Moncrief, I, I literally have no clue, no idea why they would want Moncrief. I think it's just a depth move. My take on Josh Gordon is this: I kind of feel like uh, he's worth picking up, yes, but keep your expectations very low. Because, uh, well, on two fronts, is that the Seahawks, they're not much of a, I mean, they are a run first offense, but Russell Wilson, depending on the matchup, Russell Wilson will throw as he did in the Tampa Bay game. But, uh, I made a, I kind of made a joke that Josh Gordon is kind of like the second coming of Percy Harvin. So I, I don't know how that sounds, but, uh, because the Seahawks were all high on getting Percy Harvin, and he turned out to be kind of a bust. So, but I don't think they're looking at Josh Gordon as as a bust as such. But uh, I think he, I, the only person he really hurts is DK Metcalf. Maybe you know, but I, it appears like there's a lot of targets to go around. But definitely going to be matchup based. If if you're planning on starting him at any point, uh, the matchup has to be right. Um, <clears throat> Kev uh, Jacoby Brissett out with knee sprain. Um, Brian Hoyer, uh, worth a stream? Um, in a really, really good matchup, I guess so. I'm not really, uh, it's just the upside really isn't there anymore. Uh, especially with T.Y. Hilton missing a couple weeks. I get that Hoyer came in and threw a couple touchdowns, but I don't think you can really bank on it week to week. And, uh, John o. Adam Thielen, uh, uh, the Vikings are uncertain about his return. He played seven snaps and he just couldn't, he just couldn't do it. And so, um, are we picking up Ola BC? Uh, yeah, you could, but I don't think Olabisi really has a ceiling that you can bank on. He's got an almost zero floor, um, and with the way that Dalvin Cook and Alex Madison are running, I don't see why they would force you know throws from Kirk Cousins uh, in the kind of offense they're actually running. Um, I didn't catch the game or read or catch the news. Did Diggs get hurt or did he just disappear for the sake of disappearing? Uh, he just disappeared. Um, it was. Uh, it wasn't the. It wasn't. It was really kind of a strange game script. Um, 
Yeah, Diggs wasn't hurt. Uh, he didn't come up on the injury report or anything. It was just a down game for him. Uh, Laquan, it seemed like uh, Laquan Treadwell was the guy that Cousins wanted to target. So, and uh, yeah, I mean, weird script. I don't see Diggs. I, I don't see that happening again. I think it's going to be another one of those like 14, 15 target games for Diggs. And I don't think Johnson's a priority pickup unless you're like really hurting on bye weeks. Mm. Uh, Kev, uh, Deshaun Johns, Deshaun Jackson, DJ. Uh, is uh, having core muscle surgery. Um, he he like he tried to give it a go, just like Adam Thielen did with the Vikings, and but he aggravated uh, his abdominal tissue and uh, it's torn off the bone. Apparently, um, he could be out for the season. Are we? Uh, who are we looking at uh, to uh, solidify in our lineups with him out? Um, I think the one probably beneficiary is Dallas Goddard. Actually, uh, I just don't really like any of the receivers, so. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really think it's worth picking up like uh, JJ Arthur Whiteside or Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar, one of probably one of my least favorite players. So um, I'd probably just go with Goddard, I guess, and and kind of hope, especially with the tight end position being so bad. Hopefully, he he kind of steps up a little bit. All right. And um, Mark Walton, uh, four game suspension. Uh, Kalen Bellage and Miles Gaskin are the are the next guys up. Um, Jono, uh, what do you think of uh, Belage or Gaskin, or is it just gonna? Are they gonna just go with hot hand, or what's gonna be? Man, if you're adding Kalen Belage at this point in the season, you're either re- stuck with injuries or something went terribly wrong. That's that's a desperate pickup. Um, he's not a good player, Kalen Belage. Gaskin probably has a higher ceiling, probably, but I wouldn't really risk it. But I think the Dolphins got their one win out of the way <laughs> last week, and game scripts are gonna be bad the rest of the way. I wouldn't risk anything on really either player unless uh, you really really need it is, is it fair to say then that uh Kalen Bellage or Miles Gaskin uh will come up in the uh in your little in your uh waiver pickups column they'll come in the bottom <laughs> like at the like uh also the other po- options other yeah. options <laughs> I mean, I'm, I didn't have time to write it this week, which I put into the group. Hopefully somebody saw that. <laughs> I'm getting a little worried now, but. Okay. And finally, with the last injury, of course, is Paris Campbell, and he's out with a broken hand, uh, out indefinitely. We don't know the, the, the status of him, but I don't think we really care about the Colts unless, uh, Jacoby Brissett is back. I'm my I my view personally of of Brissett being out. Um, it hurts everybody. Um, I mean, it didn't hurt. Didn't it? Didn't seem to hurt Jack Doyle, but uh, he had a pretty good game. But uh, we'll we'll get into these games right now. We'll start off with uh, San Francisco and Atlanta, the Thursday night game from last week. Uh, good game for J- Jimmy Garoppolo. Actually, came out as the second highest. Uh, quarterback in fantasy uh for week nine uh thoughts on this game uh kev uh Kenyon drake 15 carries 110 yards and a touchdown yeah drake look drake looked really good um it's I, i'm not really sure what the status of david johnson and chase edmonds is but you know if they're going to be out then i think i think drake really demonstrated that he's a good fit for this offense and i mean it, it's not there's not a better team that he could demonstrate it against than the niners who are probably the best defense in football right now so if if uh David Johnson and Chase Edmonds are going to remain out. Then I like Kenyon Drake as pretty clear, you know, uh, mid to low end RB two going forward. And uh, John, o, whoa, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, he really fits into the 49ers offense, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean the chemistry he developed with Garoppolo right away um, already looks like his favorite target. But considering how Dante Pettis and Debo Samuel were playing, that's not really surprising. Um, it could look even better as they grow more comfortable with each other and he gets more ingrained into the offense. Of course, I wouldn't expect, you know, 112 yards and a touchdown every week. But Sanders is looking like he could be an every week option once again after an awful run uh, this season in Denver. Yeah, and Kev, uh, just a little brief brief blurb on the uh, uh, your take on the San Francisco running backs. Um, you just don't know who it's going to be uh, from week to week. Uh, this week it was Breda's turn. Uh Last week it was Tevin Coleman. What what gives? Who do we start? Um, you know, I think if if it's as a flex, you can start both of them, either of them, um, as an RB two. I mean, I probably the one who has the higher upside is is 
Coleman, even though, you know, Breda is a big playmaker. Coleman um, is getting the more valuable touches. He's getting the red zone stuff uh, three touchdowns a week ago. So Breda isn't going to get those multiple touchdown games, even though he's even if he's taking the majority of the, the carries. Um, it's just not really working out that way. So I guess Coleman is the way to go. And then Breda and you just kind of got to hope and pray it goes your way that week. Yeah, uh, pretty, uh, pretty low output for uh, uh, for Tevin Coleman. He only scored five uh, half PPR fantasy points. Moving right on to lo- to the London game. You know, I in my column I touted this is probably one of the going to be what probably the one of the best London games you're going to see of the year. It turned out to be mm, terrible, really. Uh, it really didn't even get going in, in the second half. Uh, a little bit, but um, my question to you, Jono, is um, there's going to be a controversy of the quarterbacks, and Gardner Minshew really didn't make his case in this game. Uh, he did he did throw for 309 yards, but he had two interceptions, and he lost the ball. Uh, I Any thoughts on, on uh, Minshew and Foles uh, and this quarterback controversy, if yeah, there I mean, is going to be think- one? It's kind of like what we went over last week. I think Minshew, as long as he doesn't actively lose them games, I think they'll keep him in. But like you said, that performance wasn't wasn't the best. He racked up some nice garbage time yards, Blake Bortle style. But uh, I guess the game before Foles comes back is really going to be the true test. And we'll have to see based on his performance. But I don't think anybody's really heavily relying on Minshew anyways. Yeah. Uh, the, Kev, the top receiver was uh, Reichel Armstead. Uh, <laughs> That really kind of tells the story of the uh, Jaguars defenders in this game. But uh, all, all in all, I guess, can we just throw this game in the can for the Jaguars and just move on to the next game, next one after they come off the bye? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I mean, it's hard to throw one in the can when the quarterback might be changing after the bye. But uh, uh, I don't think there's much else to do. I think Minshew put in eight games of good work. So one game, you know, I'm willing to be, give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, and are we, uh, would you would you also, sticking with you, uh, Carlos Hyde, do you think he's moving on up? I mean, 19 carries, 160 yards, he did pretty good there. <sighs> Sadly, I have to admit, I was wrong with Carlos Hyde. And yeah, he, he is. I mean, he's, he's just... Um, when the Texans really get going, like they have a good balance of running the ball and passing the ball. And uh, a game like this where they get out ahead and they have the opportunity to kind of grind it a little bit, then Carlos Hyde is going to be pretty valuable because he's just going to get, you know, 15 to 18 carries per game. Moving right along to uh, Detroit 24, Oakland 31. Uh, Matthew Stafford, 406 yards, one interception, three touchdowns. Uh, pretty big outing. Derek Carr, not too bad either. Two touchdowns, only 289 yards, but uh, still a fairly good uh, fairly good day with no interceptions. Um, Jono, um, the Detroit backfield. Now, is J.D. McKissick the guy? Nope, nobody's the guy. The- don't that backfield is is too much of a mess. I think Ty Johnson still led them in touches, but he's inefficient. And I think we talked about what could happen with this backfield now is that Matt Stafford is going to start going to throw uh, going to start throwing the ball forty plus times a game, and clearly it was effective. Um, they didn't win, but Stafford had a great game, and that was the, really the only time they can get the ball moving. I think this is a backfield you want to avoid, and this is going to be Stafford show until. Until further notice. And uh, Kev, on the other side of the ball, uh, Oakland, uh, 28 carries, 120 yards. Um, Josh Jacobs keeps doing it. Yeah, he's a beast. Um, There's not much more to say than that. He's probably one of the better rookie running backs that's been in the league for fantasy in a while. Uh, the Raiders just love keep giving it to him, and he doesn't really have any other competition. The other two backs aren't great at all. So, yeah, he's just going to keep doing it. Is a, I, w- I would say this. Do you think there's any uh, – I'm just going to take a look at their schedule coming up for uh, – <laughs> Excuse me for Josh Jacobs. Um, he's I have him at RB thirteen, but uh, with uh, with his schedule up uh, coming up, he's got the Chargers and Cincinnati uh, Jets, Kansas City. Um, do you think he's a league winner? Yeah, I mean that sounds like a really soft schedule, and I mean they're going to keep giving him the ball. Um, there's not much slowing him down, honestly, and he's going to have touchdown score. I mean he's the perfect. He's he's basically everything that we thought he would be. He's the perfect bell cow type back. He's going to catch balls. He's going to get the red zone stuff. They're going to use him when, to run down the clock. Um, there's there's not too many holes in his game right now. And like you said, with that upcoming schedule, 
uh, he's definitely going to put some people in really good playoff position. Yeah, and uh, one last uh, note on this game is Marvin Jones. He's uh, had some. He's had some pretty good uh, games, uh, Jono. Uh, even better than uh, uh, than Kenny Galladay. Yeah, I mean, we know we know uh, even from his time in Cincinnati that Jones has the potential to do this. Uh, he's not the most consistent receiver, but if you need, you know, really high ceiling guy, especially now in an offense that's going to have to throw, yeah, this is this is the kind of game that Jones can put up. Uh, following, you know, a, a really really good game last week when he scored what three touchdowns? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's uh, yeah. I think he's uh, going on. I think he's going quite well. Uh, before we get into the late games, we're going to go into continue with the early games. Uh, Washington nine. And Buffalo twenty four. Uh, Dwayne Haskins. Well, um, still haven't named a starter for him coming up. Uh, definitely, Kev. Uh, he's hurting everybody on the uh, except for I guess for Adrian Peterson. Uh, he got Adrian Peterson went over a hundred and a hundred yards. So um, I guess we until uh, Case Keenum comes back, are we sitting our uh, Redskins? Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, I think we kind of saw this coming with McLaurin, which is the, which was the, you know, the big, big hit for this one. Um, it, it's, it's kind of half Dwayne Haskins and then half, uh, Bill Callahan just wants to run a 1990s offense and hand the ball 25 times a game to Adrian Peterson. And I mean, they're going to continue to lose games, but Adrian Peterson is going to rack up the yardage and everyone else is going to be worthless on that offense. All right. Uh, Jono, uh, Devin Singletary, the breakout game. Yeah, I mean, he looked good uh, early on the season. He got hurt, you know, working his way back from hamstring injury, and he looked very, very good. Um, the, every all the Bills fans in Toronto were complaining they didn't get the ball even more. So uh, they clearly have a back there. Um, I know there was a series right there on the one, and they gave it to Gore three straight times. Uh, he couldn't get in. Allen ended up taking that in for a rushing touchdown, but uh, Singletary looked like the far better option. And if they're willing to give him those bell cow touches and kind of phase Gore out, I think he can be a big difference maker in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think he's uh, definitely, if you uh, drafted him and held on to him through thick and thin, uh, you uh, did very well. Um, Tennessee 20 at Carolina. Uh, 30. Goodness sakes, Kev. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, he just does not stop. What's to be done? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's not, not not much else to say. Yeah, he's good at football. Yeah, it just uh, really isn't. But yeah. we're still in room enough for uh, DJ Moore to uh, yeah. to get a uh, to get over 100 yards on seven catches. Yeah, that's pretty pretty. I mean, he's been one of the more disappointing players this season, and it's not. I don't know if it's really his fault since Cam's been hurt, but um, he hasn't really been able to separate himself from Curtis Samuel. Uh, hopefully, this is the game that kind of. Um, you know, sparks sparks it a little bit with Cam maybe coming back in two to three weeks or something like that. Maybe maybe DJ Moore can return value on. I think people drafted him like the fifth, maybe fifth round. So he was a pretty high draft pick, and I don't think he's been worth it. Yeah. Um. Just as a note, yeah, you um six targets for Curtis Samuel, and he scored fifteen uh half PPR fantasy points for you if you own Curtis Samuel. Good job. Uh, in that game on the uh, Tennessee side. Uh, Tannehill, I think if you started the Panthers offense, you did well. He two interceptions and he got sacked a bunch of times. Uh, um, definitely the Panthers defense is uh, if the if the matchup is right, he's the guy. But I guess uh, the point uh, of of note here actually, and this isn't really to do with the game, is uh, Kyle Allen, and uh, they're gonna keep Cam Newton out for I guess. It seems indefinitely, Kev. Yeah, I, I think they saw a foot specialist and they recommended that he not have surgery. So I guess his status is just going to continue to be up in the air. Uh, uh, I guess there's nothing else really more to add to this game. I for mean, one thing, though, is that it seems that they are holding Cam out until, like, no matter how well or poorly Kyle Allen plays, they're going to hold Cam out until he's fully ready to come back, which yeah. at least indicates to me if you've got an IR spot or something like that, when he does come back, there he's going to be a hundred percent. Yeah, terrific. Uh, pretty good game though, overall. Pretty exciting game. Uh, another exciting game too was the uh, the Vikings at Chiefs. Uh, Vikings twenty three, Chiefs twenty six. The uh, the thing I noticed in this game was uh, the Damian Will uh, Damian Williams uh, breaking into the secondary, similar to uh, McCaffrey uh, breaking out, but. The one thing I noticed is that uh, Tyreek Hill, the defender, was chasing uh, Damian Williams, and uh, Tyreek Hill just burst past the defender to catch up to, to catch up to uh, 
Damian Williams. And Damian Williams, you could see for a second, oh, man, the defender caught up to me. And it was his friend, Tyreek Hill, just uh, <laughs> who caught up and uh, escorted him into the end zone. It was quite a, quite a thrilling play. Um, uh, is uh, Jono, is uh, Damian Williams, is he back on the map? Yeah, um, he out he, he out carried uh, McCoy this week, twelve to three. Uh, Shady also only got, only got one target. Williams got three. Um, Williams, I don't know. There, it's of course still going to be a hot hand kind of thing. If you take away the ninety-one yard touchdown, um, his day doesn't look great. Of course, you can't really take away a ninety-one yard touchdown because it happened. But this isn't like oh, he got you know twenty carries or something like that. Next week, they could be back to eight, eight, nine, nine, something like that. And it's tough to say that. You know, Williams is the guy now, but like you said, he's back on the map. And I think if people dropped him, I think he, he needs to be added again, at mm. least. Yeah, you can't really, you really can't take away his touchdown. Cause then, well, then you'd have to take away, uh, Christian McCaffrey's, uh, long touchdown too. So it all yeah, counts. But he, he, he does that like every three quarters. So <laughs> unbelievable. That guy, I don't, I don't want it to make, uh, meanwhile, uh, Kev on the quarterbacking side, Matt Moore not doing too bad. Um, Got the win for the Chiefs, and uh, and uh, Kirk Cousins didn't look too bad. Um, um, you can still start your Chiefs, obviously, with Matt Moore in there confidently. Yeah, uh, I mean, the ceiling's not going to be there unless, you know, you're Tyreek Hill and you just uh, touch down threat every time you touch the ball. But uh, Matt Moore is not the worst quarterback in the world. Um, he's passable, and uh, he's, you know, with Andy Reid, he's kind of like an offensive genius or whatever. He's going to make it work, so... I was never really too worried about it. I mean, you're still going to start your Chiefs. I mean, besides, you start main guys at least. You're not going to start Sam or Miko or whatever. But uh, the main guys on the Chiefs, I was never really too worried about. No, that's. Uh, but uh, also in this game, you mentioned um, uh, that uh, about the the Adam Thielen thing and uh, and Laquan Treadwell did uh, got a lot of uh, got a lot of targets in that game. A lot more than what I usually see him. He usually gets one or two. But he got he got four or five in this game. So. Uh, a uh, bit of a, I wouldn't say a down game for Dalvin Cook. Well, I guess it is a down game because you kind of expect him to score a touchdown, but uh, he still got uh, uh, over a hundred and about a, what a hundred and sixteen uh, scrimmage yards there. So uh, uh, if anybody is close to uh, Christian McCaffrey, I'd say it's uh, I would I would put Dalvin Cook at number two, wouldn't you, Kev? Yeah, I think he's a pretty comfortable number two this season. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, I guess we can, I'll leave the dud for last, uh, go to, uh, Chicago at, uh, uh, Philadelphia, uh, 14 to 22, Philadelphia with a big win. Um, Mitchell Trubisky, awful, 125 yards, just not getting any better. Um, but he's not harming his receivers too much. Taylor Gabriel still at 69 yards, but, um, I think we can expect a little, uh, inconsistency, uh, with the, with, with the Bears receivers because of, uh, Trubisky. I think, uh, Jono, I think so, Jono, if you're there. Oh, yep. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we can see some uh, inconsistencies with, uh, because of, uh, the performance of Trubisky, only 125 yards passing uh that doesn't that translated only into 69 yards for taylor gabriel and uh a sprinkling among the rest um uh that's that's just not cutting it i mean um can we can we trust our bears receivers while trubisky is in a slump no we're seeing trubisky regress before our eyes he looks worse and worse and less and less confident every week uh no matter how they try they try to get the running game going and help him out um it, it's not uh, when you have Allen Robinson on your team and you give him five targets for one catch and like five or six yards, just that's unacceptable. Uh, feel bad for the Bears defense and Bears fans having to watch this. Mm-hmm. Um, but geez, those receivers are going to be like you said, inconsistent and not not really trustworthy. No, I, I, I you just can't trust uh, Bears receivers until Trubisky starts getting his act together. If he can get his act together, hasn't shown hasn't shown a spark yet. Um, I'll just. I don't know his actual statistics. If he's had a 300-yard game, I don't think he has. But uh, but he's been injured. I'm not going to give that up to him as an excuse because if you're out there, you're playing. So but, five games this season with no touchdown passes, and not a single game this season with 300 passing yards. Yeah, I didn't think so. But right. uh, Kev, on the other side though, Carson Wentz, we're not really getting what we're supposed to with him though he was supposed to be he was supposed to be top 10 this is very he's been putting up uh, he's putting up a lot of qb2 weeks uh this season and yeah this i think wasn't... people had him like top six um it's just yeah it hasn't really worked out this year um they 
they're running the ball a little bit better, but that's not really a good enough reason. I think the biggest reason is somehow his offensive weapons have kind of taken a step back. Alshon doesn't really look like the same guy. Ertz is not the game changer that he has been. And then just the complimentary guys, uh, Deshaun's been hurt. Nelson Aguilar has been bad. Uh, any of the other, other, all the other additions they made this offseason haven't really worked out. The offensive line has regressed a little too. So all is put that all together and it's just been a pretty disappointing season for once. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the, uh, the running game for both teams, uh, Jordan Howard got his, uh, quote unquote revenge game. You know, I don't think of it much as for revenge because, um, he was traded for decent fifth round value. It wasn't like, uh, I don't think he was exactly pushed out or anything like that. They just didn't, uh, they, they moved on from him in a kind of a kindly way because they sent him to Philadelphia, which is in Philadelphia took the trade. It wasn't like they just left him on the street. So, so I mean, uh, 82 yards and a touchdown. Um, he's definitely the, uh, the first, first ball carry. He doesn't, he doesn't catch passes. He just rushes, which is good because, um, he'll get the touchdown. Uh, he'll get the goal line carries ahead of, uh, of his young protege. So, uh, whom <laughs> I'm always, you know what? I'm always, I always get stuck for, uh, stuck for the name whenever I'm Miles going, Sanders? Miles Sanders. Yeah. So, uh, keep waiting for my, my, my running back screen to come up. Anyways, uh, uh, no, I guess we'll uh, move on from that game. Oh, uh, I guess one one more thing. Ertz came to life for a game. Uh, I guess it was about time. I guess he was due. So uh, 103 yards and a touchdown. Well done, everybody who uh, started Ertz and hung in there. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll leave the worst to last. Go to uh, Colts at Pittsburgh. And of course, we talked about uh, Jacoby Brissett uh, didn't play didn't play most of the game. Uh, Brian Brian Hoyer. Uh, 168 yards, an interception, three touchdowns though. <laughs> Did pretty good in that in that department for touchdowns. So, um, Mason Rudolph, eh, he's still uh, still growing. Um, both the Pittsburgh receivers. Did pretty poorly, actually. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster, um, he, he just getting his, uh, in his, he got uh, five receptions, 16 yards. Not that very good, and Deontay Johnson didn't do do much better. So, Kev, uh, um, like we were saying, is is this just more more awfulness until um, until uh, Mason Rudolph gets better, or what happens? Or are we just going to go with the ground game? Yeah, I, I think the Steelers are kind of going to do what works. Um, Juju, by all accounts, does not seem to be like the alpha wide receiver who's going to demand the ball. So, you know, if that means Jalen Samuels is going to catch 12 passes, then I guess he's going to catch 12 passes. Um, it's kind of a weird shift in things, but... Yeah, I think they're going to go with um, the Steelers are going to go with, you know, what Mason Rudolph can do. And apparently that's hand the ball off and dump the ball off and not throw too much downfield. So, yeah, they're, they're, they don't seem to want to take chances with them. And, uh, of course, we talked about Paris Campbell being out. Um, Zach Pascal is in there until uh, T.Y. Hilton. I, I don't have any word on John about T.Y. Hilton. Uh, when the injury first came out, it was definitely going to be a multi-week injury. So I, he, he's not going to play, uh, next week. Uh, he might have a chance to come back the week after, but he's not going to play this week, barring some big, so a, a lot of improvement over the last week. So you're the waiver guy. Who are we picking up? Well, uh, Pascal? Jack Doyle. Jack Doyle. <laughs> oh, Jack Doyle. Uh, I guess, yeah. I, well, I guess, I guess this is pending Brissett. No, Brissett is day to day, apparently. So I'm not sure about that. Um, if he sprained his MCL, I don't see him playing after a week. But, he, wouldn't, uh, he definitely wouldn't be full health if he did. But I, I'm kind of surprised in the in the rushing game. Trey Edmonds, 12 carries for 73 yards. Um, do we have to, if you're in a deeper league, is he worth grabbing? Yeah, I mean, Jalen Samuels looked really bad running the ball. <laughs> um, Edmonds came in and looked pretty good. So I think if you're in a standard league, I think, you know, Edmonds is a decent option if Carner doesn't come back. Maybe low ceiling, but decent option. Yeah, he'd probably get the goal line carries too. Uh, yeah, probably, but possible. It's Pittsburgh. It is Pittsburgh. All right, Kev. Uh, Jets in Miami, uh, eighteen. The Miami get their first win. Yay! Uh, mm. Thoughts on this game? Uh, is uh, my question to you, Kev? Is this is Adam Gase the worst coach ever? <laughs> um, it's tough. Uh, he's in a very tight competition with Freddie Kitchens right now. Yeah, uh, I, I just, mean. I mean, Hugh Jackson exists, guys. I mean, Hugh Jackson had like flashes of, I was going to say brilliance, but brilliance is way too strong. Flashes of Flash, comp. Uh, yeah, but isn't actively yeah. throwing his players under the bus like Jackson used to. This is, 
This is Pitching two teams. Step away. If we're just talking about coaching, the ability to have your team prepared to win football games, I, I don't think Kitchens or Gase are doing a very good job. They're doing a terrible job. Like there was they both did the same thing. Like where where's where's Le'Veon Bell for, for um uh goal line carry? Nowhere. Where was Chubb? I didn't see Chubb on the goal line carry for uh for the Browns and the there was a situation there. Um I, I it's it's just plain it's just plain awful about what of what these the play calling that uh Gase and uh Kitchens are doing but but to to the point of this game um I mean I'm not seeing much growth out of Sam Darnold uh kind of an average day 260 yards one interception one touchdown. Yeah, that's nice but um but I guess I guess if there's any positives I guess well, we know that uh, uh, Preston is, uh, is, yeah, that uh, the wide receiver. Uh, Preston Williams. Preston Williams, yeah, he's uh, he's he just had a big day and then he gets hurt, so he could be out for for a lengthy period. But Gasecki uh, came out with uh, a breakout, but you know I don't see that be re- being repeated. Do you, uh, Jono? Somebody's gonna have to catch the ball. That's not Devonte Parker. Why not Gasecki? <laughs> I suppose. Huh, Kev, what do you say? Uh, literally the same thing. I mean, Preston Williams was great for an undrafted rookie, but he wasn't any, you know, leaps and bounds better than anyone else on that team. Jaseki, if he's going to, I mean, Jaseki was a first round pick, so it makes sense for him to show some flashes here and there. Um, the Dolphins really should at this point just be focusing on player development. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of mandated to like, oh, hey, let's try and get Jaseki to at least show something. Do you think there was, you know, do you think there was anything to the rumor? I don't know if you heard the rumor that uh, the, the Steelers were actively pursuing Lev Bell uh, before uh, the deadline. Do you think there's any truth in it? They confirmed it. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah, they I didn't know it was confirmed. It. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, um, that would have been interesting. It would have been hilarious. I would have enjoyed it. That actually sure. would have been almost better than the, the whole Antonio Brown saga. Almost. Yeah, that was quite. That was really something. I don't know what to make of that. But uh, when I read that, I sort of passed it off. Ah, stuff and nonsense. And here you tell me it's been confirmed. Well, there you go. I should read. Uh, I should read the uh, deeper into the instead of just headlines in the first paragraph. So, anyways, moving right along uh, into uh, the late games. Uh, ah, because we talked about Kitchens and the Browns. The Browns nineteen at Denver twenty four. Uh, Baker Mayfield continues to suck, and uh, the Browns just continue to suck, and everything sucks on the Browns. Can I just say that? I I, I don't know about uh, John. The Browns suck. Let's just face it. The Browns suck. Yeah, they're bad. Um, it's hard to out disappoint your fan base after an 0 16 season, but they're doing it. Um, it's bad. Uh, the only breast buyer on this team is Nick Chubb, and we talked about you. You were mentioning it earlier. He wasn't in on the goal line. It's because they're preparing their fans to see Kareem Hunt on the goal line instead of Chubb. I don't know Kareem Hunt. Oh, well, let's let's toss that over to you, Kev. About Kareem Hunt, he comes in. Uh, does that bring? Does that bring? Will that bring smiles to the faces of uh, fantasy people and the Browns fans? I mean, I would say it probably has a better chance of bringing smiles to Browns fans' faces than fantasy players. I mean, who's really counting on Kareem Hunt? at this point but if he can add a little more dynamicism to that Browns offense you know even though they they have so many talented players um you know it might it might help out I mean I don't really know at this point I it's hard to point at anything other than the in, than the quarterback and usually when I look at a quarterback who's talented but struggling I tend to look at the coaching and so I don't really think anything's going to change until they get rid of the coach which is uh I don't know who knows who I don't think they'd be willing to do that so quickly. Maybe they'll give him the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, John, uh, tossing it back to you. Uh, are we picking up Noah Fant this week? I mean, he was drafted in the first round for a reason, but I think, again, he's going to be inconsistent. Uh, he looked really good this week because of a 75 yard touchdown where like 17 Browns players failed to tackle him. <laughs> this is true. I swear there are players <laughs> running off the bench and missing this tackles is... on, on that play. Oh, okay. Absolutely brutal. That was the other side too on the the Browns defense. There are they 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 just arm tackle. You see how many arm tackles they make. Oh man, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And and Lindsey was just running through them like but like a knife through butter. It was just like they're just arm tackling. They're not. I he was breaking to uh, he was breaking through the first tackle every single carry almost. I mean, Whitehead got yelled at on Twitter and then said some very questionable things and got cut for it. So good for him. 
uh, for not being able to take some criticism on social media. But, yeah. And who was that? But, who, who was that? Uh, Whitehead. He was their Whitehead. free safety. Oh, yeah, right. he, he, he was one of the worst offenders of the arm tackle thing. Got yelled at on Twitter. He yelled back, said some very, very questionable things. And now he doesn't have a job. So good for him. Okay. <laughs> fair is fair. Uh, Kev, last word on this, uh, on this game. Anything else to add, uh, with, with regard to, uh, Brandon Allen or Corbin uh, Sutton? I guess Brandon Allen is, is better than Joe Flacco. Oh. I think you're right. I think you're right. What a, what a development. I know. I think you're right. I think Brandon Allen is better than, uh, Joe Flacco. I mean, like 45% of his yards came on one play where he didn't really do anything. But he got the win, John. So, uh, sure. That's fair. He won. Okay, Buccaneers uh, at Seattle uh, was a. Uh, I don't have the proper score here. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think this game ended six uh, nothing. No, it didn't end six nothing. <laughs> I've got the I've got the wrong score here. Um, it, uh, this game did not end six nothing. I must have I must have the score from the uh, from the rainy day game. It was it was forty uh forty to thirty four for the Seahawks. Did so, did one of you guys change that? I just changed. Did you change it? Or you just fixed it. Oh, I thought you were playing tricks on me. Anyway, uh, right. So Tampa Bay thirty-four, Seattle forty. Um, went into overtime. So uh, fantasy people got extra extra points from uh, Russell Wilson. Here's another guy, uh, uh, Kevin MVP. Um, personally, there's another guy I think is, is probably a better candidate. But um, yeah, I, I guess mean, ob- ob- objectively he's not. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, who has Seattle beat, and who did they lose to? Uh, they've uh, well, they lost to the Saints, but they beat the Rams. To, they've had some. They've they beat the Rams in, in the, like one of the best games of the season. It was amazing. Yeah, so uh, it's they beat the Rams. They lost to the Saints. They beat the Bengals by one. They beat the Steelers by two. Beat the Cardinals. Beat the Browns by four. Uh, lost to the Ravens by two touchdowns. Had to take the Bucks to overtime. I don't yeah, know. but to but they won. Yeah, they won the games. It's it's like saying. I guess well, we're going to get to that game in a minute, but um, also I think it speaks more to Russell's case that he's actually carrying this team to like these wins. He needs five touchdowns to actually win these games. I think I think that's MVP stuff. Yeah, um, it sucks. Bum. Crap. <laughs> uh, Jono, uh, I'll take it with you. How about uh, Ronald Jones? Uh, he's the man, I guess. Yeah, uh, 67 yards on 18 carries is nothing to write home about, but when your competition is Peyton Barber, um, yeah, you, you've established yourself as the number one. Uh, Arians came out and said that Jones going to get more opportunities. Um, and if he's still available, then should probably grab him. Yeah, I, I, he might be available on some waiver wires in shallower leagues, perhaps, but. Um, I think he's last I saw he was like seventy five or something. So like ha- the quarter of the league's out there, he's still there. So All right. and uh, Kev uh, Chris Carson's still doing it, but uh, a little bit of fumbleitis creeping into his game again. Wait, Chris he, Carson, a little bit of fumbling. Goblin? Yeah, Chris Carson had a little bit of a, a little bit of fumbleitis. He nearly lost the ball. It went out of bounds, but uh, so Seattle maintained the uh, possession, but. Uh, uh, we could have a little bit of concerns, but he still got 16 carries, 105 yards. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like AP back. I mean, I'm not comparing Chris Carson. I, yeah, actually, what am I saying? I am, uh, like, it's like you take the good with the bad or you take the bad or the good or whatever it is. Like if he's going to fumble, you know, it's going to cost you every once in a while, but otherwise he's so talented and he offers, he adds so much to the game that, um, you kind of just live with the fumbles. Yeah. Uh, next. Uh, thing that I would I would say that uh, Tyler Lockett, good lord, 13, ca- 13 catches, 152 yards, two touchdowns, Jono uh, with uh, Josh Gordon coming in. Uh, he can't maintain this. Well, he shouldn't maintain this, but um, Seattle just, uh, I think Seattle plays the matchup, don't they? So um, it's going to be up or down based on matchup, right? Tyler Lockett is like matchup proof. He's, he's going to catch big he's gonna catch his big you know big he's gonna have those those big catches every single week uh you know seemingly midway through the fourth quarter he's gonna have two points and then by the time the game game ends he's gonna have like 30 Mm. that's just tyler lockett i don't think gordon's gonna affect him um much if at all uh lockett's not normally a volume guy anyways so i don't think it's really gonna take that that much away from him they seattle knows that lockett's probably their best receiver so lockett's fine he's gonna have his blow up games and for somebody that doesn't is isn't a target hog 
um, like somebody that's like, say, Mike Evans, he, he has a good floor as well. Mm-hmm. And speaking of Mike Evans, uh, Kev, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, who would you rather own? Uh, I think I would rather own Mike Evans. I uh, just, um, I don't know. I flip, I flip back and forth on it, but I think it is Evans in the long term. Um, just at the end of the day, when you have Jameis as a quarterback and you're going to have accuracy issues and decision making issues, I'd rather just probably have the bigger body guy who might just be able to beat his defender out. All right. Um, just sorry, small correction to my Ronald Jones thing. I don't know who I was thinking of, but Jones is only owned in 41% of Yahoo leagues. So widely available. Widely available. You heard it here first. Uh, moving on to one more thing. Mike Evans is the wide receiver one in half PPR leagues. So. Uh, he's, he's like objectively the better wide receiver. For I think. I right think now. I would. Yeah, I think I would just slightly take uh, Evans ahead. Although either week you could you could be starting the wrong guy. You have to start them both, but one is gonna one is gonna tip the scales better than the other on alternating weeks, depending on who's open and the uh, the coverage schemes that they're up against. So. Anyways, uh, moving right along, uh, Green Bay 11, uh, Chargers 26. Uh, obviously, uh, Green Bay, they prefer the cold weather. They were talking about that. I was reading uh, an article that uh, Green Bay does not do good in uh, uh, warm weather in the uh, in November. <laughs> they, prefer the, they prefer the cold, uh, and it really showed. Aaron Rodgers, 161 yards and a touchdown after having uh, two games where he seemed to be turning it around after a very kind of... Uh, lukewarm start to the season uh a bad game all around for all the uh packers and uh eh, just uh is this one that we just uh throw in the throw in the can kev i mean the packers just seem to do this like once or twice a year um where they have a pretty good matchup that they should kind of cakewalk uh, they should at least you know we saw Aaron Jones, we saw Jamal Williams up against the 26th ranked Chargers rush defense, and they come out and both post donuts, or not donuts, but you know, close enough. Rodgers struggled all day. Uh, I guess you just have to throw it away, just because you know it's the Packers, and and you, you know that they'll bounce back. But it's just weird that every year that they do this, and and there's not much we can really do to predict anything about it. All right, and uh, I guess on the Chargers side, I guess we can say, uh, Jono, that uh, Melvin Gordon is back. Yeah, shocker that somebody might need some games to you know come back. Uh, I guess without training camp, the with without training camp, I guess he needs some time to just get in a rhythm. Um, I was very down on him last week, but I, I'm honestly not too much higher on him. Uh, he looked much be- much better in this game, but the entire Green Bay team was just bad. Uh, well, we'll see what happens next week. Of course, the arrow's pointing up for him, but I wouldn't trust the one, but just the one outing just yet. Yeah. I'm going to be talking about Keenan Allen in our segment on uh, on Panic Button later, so I won't discuss him now. But uh, oh, we're allowed to do that. Both my moving on ups have already been discussed. I've been searching for new ones. Oh, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're allowed to do that. Damn it! All right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We can, we can, we can revisit who because we don't know who exactly uh, they were until we get until we get to that point. So, uh, so we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out who who who. Because I mean, I already talked about no offense, but uh, Keenan Allen, why, why, why is he invisible? He's a good player. He should be, he should be catching balls. I mean, here's here's Keenan Allen. Last six games, uh, half PPR, seven points, four points, four points, eight points, nine points, six points. Playing playing a very uh, a Packers team that was uh, flat, and and it's all going to Mike Williams and uh, Hunter Henry. So I, I I sure don't get it, but it is what it is. Uh, Kev, you have any thoughts on this, or what, what, do you own uh, Keenan Allen anywhere? I don't actually. I I <laughs> I mean, previously three weeks, I would have really wanted to own him. Uh, he's he's one of my favorite players to watch. I think his route running is amazing. His ball can his ball skills are great. But yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, it's weird. I guess Hunter Henry is taking a lot of targets away from him. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of inexplicable to me. Like something part of me wants to just say like, oh yeah, he's gonna pick it up, but. It's been five weeks now, so I have no idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Mike Williams is doing better. 10, 10, 7, 8, 13. In fact, it was uh, Mike Williams' first 100 yard game of the season against the Packers. Did very well. Um, next, uh, next up is, uh, this is the big one. Okay, guys, I could just let you guys, I could just let you guys go and just have a chat over this, have a friendly chat over this, uh, the Sunday night game, uh, New England 20, Baltimore 37. Uh, who wants to start? Anybody take the floor. Go ahead. 
dive in. It should have been I a mean, bigger blowout. Yeah, it really should have been. It was awful. This was not really a close game. Like nope. outside of us <laughs> fumbling the ball and then immediately uh, doing some other dumb shit. Yep. The fact it, that the Pats had a chance, like close to the end of the third, was unbelievable. Like they were just so bad in all facets. Yeah, and uh, I was watching uh, uh, Bill Belichick's. Uh, <laughs> couldn't wait because this has been Bill Belichick's first loss of the season, so you know you want to hear what he has to say. And he isn't much different after he wins, because after he wins, he's just like, mm, we could have done this better. He's never happy. He never smiles unless. You know, unless he's... He's screwing unless he, with the Jets? Yeah, he's, unless he's screwing with the Jets. Yeah, that's the only time he'll smile. But uh, <laughs> he doesn't. never smiles at press conferences. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, a, a rather unusual game that I actually thought Bill Belichick would have some sort of idea how to deal with this... Uh, this pistol run read option thing, you know, I thought they would kind of force force uh, Lamar Jackson into being conventional. Uh, Lamar Jackson, I guess, uh, Kev, is he the guy that you were gonna say is actually the uh, MVP? Is that is that who you're thinking? <laughs> Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm joking. Um, there's no real. It's just nine games in, so I don't really care too much about the MVP. You but were thinking McCaffrey. I definitely wasn't thinking McCaffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give it to a running back basically, unless he. It, it's gotta like if you're gonna give it to a running back, you've got to actually wait till the end of the year stats because the impact is just like who knows really. Um, it, it's pretty much always gonna be a quarterback, and then you know we're only nine games in, so much is gonna change in the next seven weeks that. You know, just because Lamar Jackson beat the Patriots and he beat the Seahawks and, you know, he's putting up video game numbers. Uh, I'm not saying he should be MVP, but uh, I'm not saying he shouldn't be. I, I 163 d- yards passing is not video game. <laughs> just saying. Uh, 37 points against the Patriots. All you, you see me doing these imaginary air quotes, right? All time great defense. Not pretty at good. all. Pretty good. Uh, the one thing I would like you to address, though, Kev, is the uh, the tight end situation with Baltimore. Um, seems like one day it's one guy. Like this this week it was Boyle. Another week it's going to be Andrews. Another week it's going to be Hurst. But uh, I don't know if Hurst is hurt or not. I didn't I didn't see didn't see him his number get called. But but uh, I don't know what 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 are we supposed to make of these these tight ends on uh, Baltimore anyway. I mean, I think the point is that, you know, you're not supposed to make anything of it. And other opposing defenses aren't going to make anything of it either or aren't going to be able to either. Uh, if you have three tight ends out there who can run block, pass block, and run routes uh, for this type of offense, it's it's infinitely useful. So I think the point is that the, all three of them are going to be on the field a lot. And, I mean, Mark Andrews is the primary cast, pass catcher. But, like, there's going to be weeks like this where Boyle takes his touchdown or there's going to be another week where Hurst leads the team in receptions. And I think the idea is just to be multidimensional like that. Yeah. Uh, a good day for Mark Ingram, I should mention. Well, 100, over 100 yards and uh, 15 fantasy points, I believe. I'll just check here. Yes, it was. No, 13. 13 half PPR points. So, good day. Good day for uh, back on the ball uh, after uh, after a bit of a down week last week. Okay, that's our game for the week. Time to get into our uh, final uh, uh, segments of the game, and that is our panic button. Um, I guess I'll start with you, uh, Jono. Uh, who's your panic? Who's uh, panic? First panic, we kind of mentioned him already. Uh, Terry McLaurin, so long as uh, Dwayne Haskins is starting for the, for the Redskins, McLaurin is not going to do very well. Haskins doesn't really have a feel for playing QB at the NFL level yet. Uh, Even though he played with McLaurin in college, he didn't really look to him that often. And he's just not not really not really going to be there unless Haskins figures it out very very quickly. And I see Kevin just stole my panic. Damn it! All right, my second one. <laughs> Kevin, who's yours? You panic uh, going on? I, I feel like me and Jonathan discuss every goddamn week. Um, Sonny Michelle. I I don't. I, I gotta get it that they were playing from behind, but for him to only have five touches and I think seventeen percent of the snaps is crazy. Um, it's the Belichick being- way. It's the Belichick way. It's one guy, one week, and then you're gonna see Burke. Well, he, he he ran a wrong route in the first quarter and saw the field like three times afterwards. Right. That's the that's the concern. Is yep. Burke is back? Uh, Sonny apparently has the shortest leash in the world. Are is this gonna affect things going forward? I feel like it's going to. Yeah, I, it's just funny because people thought that he, at one time he was on the moving on upscale. Now he's on the moving on down. So. Um, I, I think it 
what really works against them is that the Patriots have actual football teams um, to play now. Their schedule coming up is, what, Eagles, Cowboys, Texans, Chiefs. So they're going to have to throw way more than they've been. And Sony's just not going to be in on those downs. So That's a good point. Um, I'm, my guy is, uh, I mentioned him as Keenan Allen. You know, the targets are there. Well, the targets weren't there in this game. But, I mean, uh, this is his targets for the last six games, like from late September. Uh, six against Miami, six against Denver, six against Pittsburgh, 11 against Tennessee, 10 against Chicago, and his lowest target count of, of the season against Green Bay at home, four targets, three catches for 40 yards. I, I, I don't understand it. What, what gives with, uh, Keenan Allen? And, and for some reason, I don't know why, but it, it appears that, uh, uh, well, Mike Williams only got four catches, but he's getting the air yards. I think that's what's giving Mike Williams a bit more of an edge is he's getting the air yards. His, but his targets have been like, uh, well, he was out against Miami, but he's had 13, 10, 6, 6. And of course he had four just like Keenan Allen, but his four were quality, um, air yards. Um, uh, apparently I, I don't know where I read somewhere. I think it's our, our friend, uh, James Coe, Kev. He brought up the point that, uh, that, Mike Williams apparently is number one in air yards. Is that right? Possibly, or he's up there. Um, for the season. Yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think he's a leader for for air yards that are air yards on targets or something like that. I don't know how how it works exactly. I don't follow the air yards because um, apparently somebody's somebody's pointed out a, a bit of a flaw in air yards. I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, there's a bit of a downside to that statistic. But I don't know. I still think it's pretty good. I mean, if you're getting uh, if you're getting three catches on four compared with uh, what Keenan Allen got on for his uh, three catches, I mean, he, it's obviously that Mike Williams is getting the quality catches. But I don't know, Mike. I'm but three yards list right now. Mike Evans is in front by two sixty over Keenan Allen, who's second with a thousand. Mike Williams is tenth. With 815, uh, uh, if you do the math because he missed a couple weeks, does that make him the leader? I don't think so. So, um, well, in average, um, average air yards per target, he's at 15 air yards a target. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth. Yeah, so average, he's eighth, but that's behind the guys like Chris Conley, so and James Washington. Mm. Oh, all right, okay. Oh, yeah. and Darius Slayton, he's number two. Wow. Uh, by the way, is there any updates on this game? No, uh, game's been uh, over for for a bit. Uh, final LA score, down, which was hilarious, and I won my fantasy matchup because of it, which is hilarious. <laughs> Did you win uh, our 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 league? Yes, I was I was uh, I was saved from a night of just hating myself for starting Mark Walton. Yeah, well, saved you know, I, I I was pulling for you, Kev. Uh, I was actually pulling for both of you. I was pulling for. Uh, Oh, I got control. blown out. Yeah, you did. I, I, I saw the scoreboard, but I didn't look who you... I, I can't remember. Your, by your... like 145, I was already out of it, so... Yeah, so... yeah, So, Kev, you won. Yay! Well, I was hoping for you. I'll tell you why I was hoping for you, because uh, I felt bad just a little bit <laughs> about beating you by a point last week, so... Mm. Oh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to talk about that. <laughs> but uh, but it happened, and it was it was what it was. Anyways, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster was my other guy just going around the turn. Uh, he was he's my other uh, guy that I'm worried about, mainly because um, no uh, no Pittsburgh Steeler receiver is uh, is good. Kind of a similar situation to Washington at the moment because of the quarterbacking. Quarterbacking matters for your for your receivers, and Juju uh, uh, he's definitely panic button for me. Um, you guys got another panic button before we move on to our moving on ups? I have another one. Okay, kind of offshoot of what we were saying with the um, the Chiefs Vikings game, but I'm. Um, Kind of panicking on McCoy uh, since his fumble uh, last week. Uh, Damian Williams has absolutely dominated the the snaps over the last five quarters. Williams has fifty seven snaps. And McCoy's got six. Uh, Hell yeah! Disregard what I said earlier. I I don't know. McCoy could come back anytime. But honestly, with the the way the snaps went this game, that's like damning evidence. After a fumble, you get benched that badly. Unless he's hurt, that's brutal. And I, I, he's not playable until he. Until he gets the snaps back up significantly. Mm. I guess that means uh, we can pick up Daryl Williams or something like that. 
possibility. I guess it should be owned anyway. Deeper leagues, just in case, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kev, uh, you're the you're up. Uh, who's if you got one more uh, panic button? Or are you gonna pass? Player pass. Um, let's see if I can come up with one in about ten seconds. Okay. Uh, got lots nope. of time. I got nothing. Got nothing. Okay. Uh, John, do you want to add an extra for uh, you extra panic? Add? No, no, I'm okay. I pass. Uh, I guess I'll. I guess I'll throw in. Uh, I'll just say one word. Uh, mm, no, I haven't got one. <laughs> He's been bad for five, six weeks now. And I don't think we've ever brought him up. But Ooh. Larry Fitzgerald, he's been oh, bad. Yeah, uh, that's true. I mean, he gets Tampa next week, so he could bounce back like pretty, pretty strong. But uh, I don't know. After his first three weeks, everyone's pretty excited for him, and he's he's significantly cooled off. I thought he could. Uh, I thought uh, people could pick him up cheap as a as a buy low. So I think he's a good buy low myself because uh, he's very low. You can buy him low. Good buy low candidate. Alshon is another player who is sucking. Yeah. That's that's who I thought that you could buy him low with. <laughs> uh, that that sort of that sort of level. Um, yeah, there's a there's another one. There's another panic button there right there. And uh, so, anyways, uh, moving on up. Uh, John, I'll start with you. Moving on up. Uh, I'm gonna go with Muhammad Sanu. He had a great game in his second game with the Pats. Uh, 14 targets, 10 catches, uh, and a touchdown. Just good game. He looked good. He obviously has Brady's trust already. Played every snap. Um, and Kill Harry didn't play, but I don't think he's gonna have that big of an uh, of an impact on a veteran. And for all that we talked about him being, you know, behind Dorsett or you know whoever, he he out targeted Julian Edelman, which is no small feat in the Pats' offense. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I I really underestimated uh, Sanu. I thought Sanu was just going to be, you know, depth, but they actually really actually needed him. Uh, turns out, uh, considering what they've got left. <coughs> uh, Kevin, moving on. Uh, Sanu was absolutely roasting Mar- Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters had no chance. Um, yeah, my moving on up guy is Zach Pascal. Um, just T.Y. Hilton's going to miss a couple weeks. Pascal had two weeks ago at Houston, had uh, six catches for 162 touchdown, and then completely busted with one catch for six yards. But followed up this week with a pretty solid game, five catches, 76 yards, and one touchdown. Um, I mean, he's just going to be... I guess he's the number one receiver in that offense. And, you know, whether or not you believe Brian Hoyer is going to be any kind of good, uh, the number one receiver, I mean, the surrounding pieces of that offense are pretty solid and Brian Hoyer is passable. So uh, I think Pascal can be pretty useful, especially if Brissett is actually going to play in week 10, like reports say he might. Yeah. Uh, I also, I uh, mentioned uh, Noah Fant already in the, in the game commentary. Uh, another reason I think um, Noah Fant is moving on up is mainly because um, Emmanuel Sanders is on the 49ers and uh, Deshaun Hamilton is just nowhere to be found in that offense. And I think Noah Fant is the guy they want to get going, which they did. And I think Noah Fant, whom I dropped in our league, regrettably, and held on to that bum Eric Ebron, who, who didn't get his, who didn't get his traditional weekly touchdown, which is all I was hoping for. But uh, he couldn't even get that. But Noah Fant, I think, is the guy who's going to get targets. And uh, it's definitely a guy to, to own. Now, granted, this could, um, you correctly pointed out, this was a, this performance was against the Browns. Which, uh, <laughs> which they are, uh, awful. So we can't really, I guess you can't really count that, but still, you put up the numbers and, um, Emmanuel Sanders isn't there, so he's the guy. So, uh, I guess I'll go around the turn and say Ronald Jones, whom we al- already mentioned. I'll just mention him briefly. Yeah. Um, it, uh, Arian says he's the number one now. So, uh, going back around the turn, it's to you, Kev. Um, uh, so my guy, second guy is Ryan Tannehill, actually. Um, since he's become a starter, he's averaged 19, around 19 fantasy points per game. Uh, had, <clears throat> sorry. Had 23 this game uh, with two touchdowns. Or what is this? Read that wrong. One one touchdown, but he also added 38 yards and a touchdown on the ground, which is something that he used to do a lot in Miami and something that the Titans probably should be comfortable with their quarterback doing since they had Mariota there for a while and he's uh, you know a running quarterback. So um, Tannehill is someone who's uh, over 300 yards twice this season, um, six touchdowns in his last three games. Pretty good, actually. Um, uh, he's got KC next week, which is pretty soft, then a bye, then Jacksonville, Indy, Oakland, Houston. He's probably a guy that you can roll out there most of those weeks and you'll probably get high-end QB2 points. Yeah, uh, definitely worthwhile uh, for 
for the Titans, and he's got the weapons too, doesn't he? Uh, granted, it was a tough, tough match against the Panthers, but uh, yeah, I like it. John Oval. Yep. Speaking of Tannehill's weapons, I'm gonna go with uh, AJ Brown. He once again looked good with uh, with Tannehill in there. Seven targets, uh, his second highest total of the season. Uh, now in three games with ten, three full games with Tannehill, he's uh, racked up what 18 targets. Uh, and, and a touchdown. He had 81 yards. Again, his third highest total of the season. Uh, a a one, 21 yard catch, 135 yard catch. He's a big play guy. And as long as he's getting the targets, he's, he will break these for touchdowns and big. I mean, you can use with a decent quarterback like Tannehill at the helm. And, uh, well, I guess we're at the cl- closing. Uh, we already talked about Gase and Kitchens already. I've had this in our uh, in our final word segment. But uh, is there anything else that we can add? John, I want to ask you if there's any wafer pickups that we should be going for this week. Who's, who's the top of your, who's going to, who can we see at the top of your list in the, uh, in the waiver article this week? Just to give people uh, a head start. I mean, it would have been Pascal. Just with everybody else hurt, Zach Pascal is by far the, the highest ceiling option. Normally, when a starting running back is out, you have to say the backup running back, but I've already been over Kalen Balaj. I don't want to talk about Kalen Balaj. No. So, it's going to be Zach Pascal this week. All right. And, uh, I, I, yeah, like I say, I guess, I guess my guy would probably be no fan. Uh, maybe. Uh, I think there's I think there's some running backs you can sort of take a little bit of a flyer on because I think things are quite unsettled and I think if you want to uh, if you want to try Miles Gaskin or or you want to try JD McKissick uh, I think they're worthwhile if you want to if you want to kick the tires on those guys and uh, I mean it could be just a one-off Kevin you got a guy you got any uh, advice for people who want to pick up some uh, I think if you're PPR league, Look at JD McKissick. I think if you're in standard and you really, really need a start, um, maybe look at Trey Edmonds and and just pray. Uh, it's it's kind of bare pickings this this week. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Uh, pretty good. Uh, pretty good weeks are gone past us now. I think for uh, it's getting to that it's getting to that time of year where we're not seeing as much good stuff. Anyway, so it's on to week ten. Double digit weeks, guys. Double digit weeks. <laughs> We're getting to the end of it. Uh, I want to thank uh, Kevin Ho and uh, Jonathan Chan. And I'm Richard Seville for FantasySixPack.net, The Fantasy Edge. We'll see you next week, everybody. Take care and have a good week 10. Take care. Yeah, that is the show. Duh.